Good morning, class. Good morning, Brother Keith. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School is the place where our spirit is fed, where our faith grows stronger, and where we learn how to be overcomers. And there's much to learn about the faith walk and the faith life. There's, uh, it has to do with the interaction with the source of faith himself, God, and learning his ways and what pleases him. It's not about just learning some principles of faith. It's living trust in the living God, which involves a living relationship and fellowship. It, it involves prayer. It involves feeding on his word. It involves listening and uh, doing and obeying. Get your Bible, get something to make a note with, come on into the classroom with us, and let's learn more about it today. Father, all of us give you thanks that we know you, that we belong to you, that we're not blind and lost somewhere today, but that we are with you, and we're forever with you. Thank you so much. We know that you have a plan for us in this life, and it involves listening to you and, and trusting you. And so we want to do that. And we ask you for direction, guidance, uh, open the scriptures to us and our heart and understanding. And we purpose by your grace to not be forgetful, uh, not to just ignore it, but to put it into practice and live by it. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Look, please, in Hebrews, the third chapter again. Hebrews chapter 3, we've been studying on a series that we're calling Overcoming Unbelief. In the third chapter of Hebrews, we see in verse 7, as the Holy Spirit says today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness when your fathers tempted me, proved me, or they tested me, and saw my works forty years Wherefore I was grieved with that generation, said, They do always err in their hearts, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Exhort one another daily, while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So that's what's happening right now. I'm exhorting you. <laughs> I'm exhorting myself. Didn't he say that? Uh, that you'd not be hardened and like he'd mentioned earlier, uh, be stiff-necked, stubborn, refusing to believe. When it comes to human beings and everything down in, in this life, you don't want to be too quick to believe. You want to see, should you trust it? Uh, should you believe it? You want to analyze things, question things. But when it comes to God, He's never lied to us. And He never will. He's never been wrong. <laughs> and He never will. He's never failed to keep His word. And He never will. So what does that mean? We can trust Him immediately. Is that right? Everything He says, even before we understand it, before we hear the rest of the sentence, we can go, okay, he's right. Right? We believe it. Instead of being slow or unpersuadable to believe, when it comes to God, be quick to believe. Quick to repent. Quick to listen. Quick to be teachable. Quick to believe. Say it out loud, I choose. I choose. To trust, God. to trust God, to be quick to believe, be quick, to quick to listen, quick to, listen. Quick to, obey. Quick to obey, 
Because he is faithful. And worthy. Of my trust. Amen. So he keeps saying. Don't. Don't be hardened like that. Verse 13, exhort one another daily while it's called today, lest you be hardened. Verse 15, he says it again. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. Why does he, why does he keep saying that? Because it is a giant problem. It was a giant problem then. It's still a giant problem now. The biggest problem on the planet and I know this is a big statement, but analyze it and see what you think. The biggest problem on the planet is people won't listen. They won't listen to God. What I mean by that is they won't, they won't hear it. They won't believe it. They won't receive it. They won't do it. They won't listen. That is a result of them being hardened and unbelieving. And refusing to. And the thing about it, God will not make you. He will not force you to. Even if it costs you everything, He's not going to force you to do it because then it wouldn't really be faith anymore if there was no choice in it. Now we've been studying the ten events that led up to what we read down in the, if you read the 18th and 19th verse of chapter 3, it says, To whom swore he that they should not enter into his rest, but them that believed not? So we saw they could not enter in because of unbelief. Unbelief is a thief. It robs people of the will of God and the plan of God and the life that God wants them to live. And so he's, he's warning us, cautioning us, don't let this happen to you. And so uh, if we'll listen to him, again, listen to him, then it won't happen to us. It doesn't have to happen to us. We can walk with him and enjoy his good plan for our life. We can experience our, you know, the New Testament version of Canaan's land, the land that flows with milk and honey. But in order to do that, we don't need to be clueless. We don't need to be casual about this. If he keeps warning you, warning you, warning you, do we need to know what happened to them? Do we need to know what this evil stuff called unbelief, what it looks like, how it acts, what it sounds like? Do we need to know these things? Yeah, we do. So that we spot it like we say a mile off and go, oh, no, 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 I ain't talking like that. That's how they talked. <laughs> and they died in the wilderness. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing what they're doing. You have to identify it in order to recognize it and know what to resist. So uh, in uh, Exodus, if you go back there again, Exodus, the 19th chapter, we've seen events 1 through 6 on our way to 10. And um, this is number 7. Event 7 and it's what happened at uh, the mount at Horeb, or is it called Mount Sinai? Verse 19, when they were gone out of the Egypt, and this, notice it says, in the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. So since they left Egypt, it's only been three months at this point. Not a lot of time. But man, they have seen some stuff, haven't they? In three months, I mean, they saw, first of all, they saw all the signs and wonders that happened in Egypt that got them out of slavery. And, and then uh, once they got out, they saw the Red Sea split. They saw deliverance there. They saw the waters of Marah where the bitter was made sweet. They saw uh, bread manna come out of the sky and, and quail flown in and water out of the rock. Have they seen a lot in three months? Hmm. Should that have an effect on you? When you keep seeing God answer your prayers, God protect you, God meet your needs, God pay your bills, put food on your table, heal your babies. Hmm? When you see that, week after week, day in, day out, month after month after month, is it unreasonable for Him to begin to expect you to trust Him and to trust Him quicker 
And without all the explanation and demonstration. Why? Because you've already seen all kinds of things. And so here they see even more. He came down, verse 16, on, on the mountain there. And they saw the fire and the tremors and the smoke and, and the lightning. The scripture said it, it was a, a terrible sight. Uh, so that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. Hallelujah. And this is something that God wants ingrained in every generation. This is something our little children should learn when they're young about the giving of the Ten Commandments. And God writing them with his finger in stone tablets. And, and uh, uh, people say, well, yeah, but we're, we're not under the law anymore. Uh, which one of those ten is, is bad now? <laughs> no, we don't, we don't keep the law in order to be righteous. Because Christ has made us righteous. But the Ten Commandments are still right. They're still right. And everything God has ever said is still right. And, and, and we didn't trade keeping the law for nothing. We have the Spirit. And He will lead you in line with everything that God has already said. He's never going to lead you, the Holy Spirit's never going to lead you to break the Ten Commandments. Hmm? Commit murder, <laughs> false witness, idolatry, right? Which one of those is no longer <laughs> good? No, it's still good to worship the Lord your God and Him only, right? And so uh, experiencing this, uh, they should have seen and known that you trust God forever. He's going to get you to the promised land. Skip on over to the 24th chapter. And reason uh, we skip, we were in 19, but in 20, 21, 22, 23, um, the Lord is giving Moses not just the Ten Commandments, but a whole lot of other things. What he called his statutes, his ordinances. And if you've never read them, you need to read them. I mean, it's just, and, and all of these things are so just and so fair and so right. For instance, he said, if somebody owes you money and, and they put up something for security that's in their house and they're in default and you go to, to get it, he said, don't go in their house and get it. Let them bring it out to you. And if it's their clothes that they sleep in, even if you get it, give it back to them before night <laughs> so, that they, so that they have something to keep them warm. See, what's wrong with knowing this today in the New Covenant? These kind of things. He said, if you, if you have day laborers and laborers that work for you, he said, pay them on the day because they're counting on that pay and they need it. Don't keep it. Don't delay. See, just things that are just right, just godly, just honorable, just honest. And if you listen to the Spirit of God, He will lead you to do that same kind of thing, even if you'd never read it. But what does it hurt for you to know it <laughs> and to read it? Then you recognize when the Spirit of God's dealing with you to do something, you recognize, well, yeah, that's the same thing God said all those years ago. He never changes. Right is right. And it'll always be right. And so the Lord had given uh, him all these things through these chapters. And uh, we see coming down to, uh, let's see, verse uh, 24 then. They had said all the words that the Lord will uh, command us to do, we will do. I actually do it like this. This is also recorded in Deuteronomy. Hold your place there in Exodus if you can. Go to Deuteronomy 5. Thank you, Lord, for helping us. Deuteronomy 5, because what's happening here 
is the Spirit of God through Moses is reminding them of what happened back there, giving them, and it's, it's like we studied those healing accounts in the uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You have to read all the accounts of it to see details. Details are given here that you didn't see in the other. So in Deuteronomy 5 and 1, Moses called all Israel and said to them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears this day, that you may learn them and keep them and do them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. And the Lord made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, all who are here alive this day. The Lord talked with you face to face in the mount out of the midst of the fire. They heard the voice of God. Not, like, like we say oftentimes, not inside. <laughs> no, not inside. They heard it out here. And when they heard the voice of the Almighty speaking out of the fire, it scared them so bad that they grabbed Moses and they said, you go, you go and you talk to him because if he speaks to us again, we think we'll all die. And that's just a revelation of the, the, the frailness and weakness of flesh in the presence of God. It, it shows why we had to have a mediator. We had to have somebody that would stand between us and God and, and plead our case. And Jesus is our intercessor. Hallelujah. But... Uh, uh, he said, you, you saw this, you, you experienced this. I stood between the Lord and you at that time to show you the word of the Lord, for you were afraid by reason of the fire and went not up into the mount saying, I'm the Lord your God that brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. You will have no other gods before me. You will, make, uh, you will not make to you any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above are in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters beneath the earth. And you will not bow down yourself to them, nor serve them. I am the Lord your God, and I'm the jealous God, visiting the iniquity of fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Now he goes on giving the Ten Commandments and then beyond. But is this still good and right today? Yes. Is it okay to pray to another God besides the Lord our God? No. no. Is it okay to have images or statues or pictures that we pray to no. and bow down in front of? No. It is not. Now, I don't care what group you grew up around. This is still right. And God still feels this way. And He's right. You don't want anything... Uh, and and, and it's, it's sad that Christians don't know this better. You see, Christians uh, travel and go abroad to other countries. And they talk about, well, we want to experience their culture. Not if it's idol worship. And you see, Christians that should know better participate in cleansing ceremonies. They burn incense and ring bells and chant to other gods and stuff. Friend, you should have no part in such a thing. No part. And you certainly don't bring one of the statues of their gods home and put it in your house as decoration. Y'all with me, class? No. No. It's wrong. It is so wrong. And if you got stuff like that in your house, get it out. Don't give it to somebody else. Destroy it. I'm serious. No. You don't Pray in front of a statue or a picture. And none of these pictures of Jesus are right. Are you with me now? No. They don't know. And they're not right. All you got to do is see how broad they are. I mean, you got, you know, blonde hair and blue eyed Jesus. There ain't no way that's right. <laughs> it's Hebrew. You know, uh uh. <laughs> And then you got all the, you know, you got all the way on the other end and, and mixtures and ideas. and No, you just don't need any picture. You'll see him soon. 
And you'll see who he is. And you don't need some distraction and diversion and the Lord. How many understand this is one of the ten. This is a big deal. And he goes into detail about you don't make any likeness, any, any image. In fact, he had said to him on the mount after he gave him the ten, he said, you will not make to you any molten gods. You don't make any gods of gold. Notice how specific he is. And then you find out why. Less than six weeks later, what did they do? They made them a god of gold, a molten god. It just strains belief. And yet, what's he telling us? You, you need to watch that you don't do the same thing. Why? Because the same devil's still around. And he will tempt you and do his best to get you to break and violate the very thing God told you not to do. That's why. Same devil still around. Well, um, he, he told them that. Now skip on down. That's in verse 10. Down to verse 22, I believe it is. He said, These words the Lord spoke to all your assembly in the mount, out of the midst of the fire, of the cloud and the thick darkness, and a great voice, and added no more. Uh, so he spoke what we call the Ten Commandments, is what he said when they heard the voice. Now all the other things, they didn't hear that. Uh, he gave that personally directly to Moses when he was with him. But they heard the Ten Commandments. And um, it said, it came to pass when you heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness, for the mountain did burn with fire, that you came near to me, even all the heads of your tribes and your elders, and you said, Behold, the Lord our God has showed us his glory and his greatness. We have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. We have seen this day that God does talk with man, and he lives. <laughs> now, therefore, why should we die? They're scared. The ground is shaking. Fire is blasting up over the whole mountain, straight up into heaven as far as you can see. They're scared. And after the flesh, anybody would be. And they said, uh, why should we die? This great fire will consume us. And if we hear the voice of, our, of the Lord our God anymore, we're going to die. We shall die. Who is there of all flesh that has heard the voice of the living God speak out of the midst of the fire as we have and lived? You go near and hear all the Lord our God shall say and you speak to us all the Lord our God shall speak to you and we will hear it and we will do it. Is that what happened? No. Do you think they thought they would at that point? Yeah, sure they did. I think... You know, nobody's ever had an experience like this in all the generations before them. They're seeing the fire. They heard the voice. The ground is quaking. They heard God speak out of the fire and say, you will have no other gods before me. You will not make to yourself any graven image. You'll not use the name of the Lord your God in vain. You, you'll remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. You'll honor your father and mother. You'll commit no murder. You, you commit no adultery. You won't bear any false witness. You, won't, you shall not covet anything that your neighbors. They heard God say that with his own voice out of the fire. Not an angel. God himself. And so they're saying, uh, we're afraid to, to hear him speak again. But you just tell us what he says, and we'll do it. We'll do it. Like I said, it's strange belief that in 40 days later, they make themselves gods of gold. These people. Now, we, we need to understand why that happened, how that could happen, because the New Testament is warning us. That the same thing could happen to us. And in hearing it, you would think, no, I would never. <laughs> and those are famous last words. <laughs> Do you remember Peter? When the Lord told him, 
all of you are going to deny me this night? And Peter said, no way. No way. He said, if I die with you, I will not deny you. And Jesus said, yeah, you will. Uh, before the rooster crows three times tomorrow morning, crows, you will have denied me, I should say, three times. And, and he was more adamant. He said, I will not. He said, if all of these deny you, I won't. Tell me what happened, class. What happened? He did. See, he, he couldn't conceive of the circumstances he was going to be in and the situation, the environment, the fear. He couldn't conceive that Jesus was going to let them take him and scourge him and crucify him. He, he, and so when the Lord warns you, what should you do? You should take it seriously. Is that right? And not get, you know, brassy and go, well, I'll never. No, I won't never. If he, say, he tells you, be careful what he, what he needs to say. Lord, show me. Show me what happened there. Show me how I can prevent doing that. Everybody said out loud, Lord, show us. Lord, show us. Give, us Give us understanding. How this could happen. How, why this happened to them. And teach us so that we don't do it. We ask it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And uh, when they said that, you, you, you come back and tell us. We'll hear it and we'll do it. And the Lord heard the voice of your words, and he said, I've heard the voice of the words of this people, which they have spoken to you, and they have well said all that they've spoken. Now listen to this. Verse 29, God says, Oh, that there was such a heart in them that they would fear me and keep my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. What's he saying? God, he knew their hearts. He knows the end from the beginning, and he, he knows they think they mean it. <laughs> but also, where are we going to be in less than two months? Acting like he didn't even say it. And can you hear his heart? Oh, that they really did have a heart to say, you tell us, and we'll do it. Can you hear the heart of God in this? Oh, that that there was such a heart in them, that they would respect me, that they, they would keep my commandments, because then it would be well with them. Hallelujah. Our time's up again today. Said out loud, thank you, Lord, for helping us to have such a heart in us. We'll see you again tomorrow here in Faith School. I've got no Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.